this is the uh, discipline part of the job that a lot of people don't get to see when it comes to being a good repo man. It is now 2.30 in the morning. I've got a special assignment on a uh, 1997 convertible black Cobra Mustang. Back in the day, it was a good, you know, $35,000 sports car. Of course, now that it's 1997, uh, how many years is that? 97, 2007, it's a 15-year-old car, right? 16-year-old car. So it's not worth what it used to be back in the day, but it's still easily worth uh, 10 Gs. And uh, it's got a lot of special circumstances around the account. The finance company actually had us go out and do some reconnaissance work on it the other night when I was up in Salt Lake at the hospital with Shanda. Uh, middle of the night, I went out there and figured out, you know, when he's home, where he parks the vehicle, how he parks the vehicle. It's right in the driveway. He backs it in, which is being a rear-wheel drive. Um, it is a stick, and so I'll probably be hooking it from the front popping it open, putting it in neutral, and then pulling it out on the street. We're going to try to avoid contact on this one if we can, but you never know with accounts like this how things are going to go. I've actually got pictures that I took of it from the other night. It was pretty dark when I took the pictures, but... I did just barely get the truck back out of the uh, shop yesterday I've got a $986 bill for let's see what they did here for us had to pay to have it towed from the hospital 105 bucks and then we had uh, diagnostics were ran on the truck to find out why it wouldn't turn over found that the signal wire to the starter was shorted out also found that the starter motor was bad put a new starter on also ran a new signal wire to the starter found that the fuel pump was also bad put five gallons of diesel into the truck we got five hours of labor at $93 an hour for a total of $588. Replaced and removed inline fuel pump, reinstalled starter, $210 for the new fuel pump. And then they've got uh, a couple sub taxes in there and some other stuff for a total of $792. And ten cents, and then so parts was three thirty nine ten. Labor was five fifty eight. Hazardous materials two twenty six dollars. That's probably the fuel for a total of nine eighty six thirty eight. Can you believe that? <laughs> new starter, new fuel pump, almost another thousand dollars into the truck. It was right at the end of my last video segment when I had that happen. What, baby? Talking to in the video. I was, I'm talking to the, the people on YouTube. What's up? Uh, huh? Did you just ruin it? Yeah. No, you're always welcome to talk. I think you, I woke your computer up. It did not want to get up at 2.30 in the morning and, and show us Evernotes. It's kind of ruining what I'm trying to do here. Shows that Evernotes is opened, but not working. Thank God for editing.
But yeah, I noticed that uh, when I went out there to start up the truck to warm it up, even at uh, 2.30 in the morning, it's uh, running a lot smoother. You'll notice when I go walking out there that the truck sounds a lot better. It had kind of a rough idle to it, and that has to do with the uh, fuel pump that was in it. It was going bad, and it was sucking air into the line, causing the truck to run rough. And uh, it sounds a lot better now with the new fuel pump. It was a little, a little bit more money than I wanted to spend on the truck right now, but it's part of keeping the company going is keeping the equipment running properly. Uh, this computer's rebooting. Give you guys an update on Shanda's new hardware. Pull your shirt up. Didn't show your bag. That little, mm -hmm. little spot right there is her small intestines sticking out of her body. That is now where her body takes a crap <laughs> into this bag that she gets to clean out. That right there is a drain. Hold it up a little bit so you can see what's in it. Looks like cranberry juice. It's blood and water. And that thing drains just out of the bottom of her incision right there. And then she's got two other small incisions, one there and one there, where they had the other two tools. One was a camera, and one was the tool they did the cutting with. And they were able to go in and cut out her large intestines and take out the section where the uh, tumor was at. Like you have a fever? Um, yeah, you're running a little bit warm. You're not critical, but you're above normal. Can you get me the, the thermometer in one of the drawers? Is it still in the little box? Hey, the computer's alive again. We also uh, have that assignment on that all-wheel drive out back, the green one that we ran Chase looking around the other day when I ran over that pole and uh, damaged my steering box. Uh, that one had gotten closed. And we got paid a closed fee because uh, we got her in to make a payment. And now that one's reopened again. And so before we leave to go through this Mustang account, I may head over there and see if we can get a GPS tracking device on that vehicle. Because it's always sitting in the garage and she never leaves it out. Uh, so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get a tracking device on it. And then tomorrow during the day when... She takes it out to go somewhere. We'll get notified that the car's moving, and then we can get that one picked up while it's outside the garage. They've given us special instructions on that one that they don't want us to make contact anymore. Um, they know that if we make contact, she'll just come in and make another small payment, which will just cause the account to get further and further and further behind, like it has been, and they don't want to do that anymore. And so they have requested that we. Um, not make contact, but just repossess the vehicle this time. So with knowing that in mind, we know that we're going to have to just get the vehicle. I need to set it up the uh, scenario so that uh, we can pick it up while it's outside that garage. What's it say your temperature is? 98.8. 98.8? 98 
So yeah, you're just barely elevated. Yeah, you gotta watch that close. It's one of the fears of having a intestinal surgery is infection. No, I'm trying to open up Evernotes and show these guys the pictures of the Mustang that I took the other night. Peter decided to have a complete utter come apart when I did that, so I had to reboot it. I, it's because I left it open all night doing conversions, and when I do that, it kills the memory. What about you, Poopoos? How are you doing, huh? Everybody misses you on YouTube. Everybody misses the Layla. They're like, where's that doggy? Where's that doggy gone? We miss the doggy. Alright, finally awake. There's the assignment. We scroll down to the bottom where we keep all of our attachments. There's the back end of the Mustang. License plate right there. He has it backed into the driveway. We've also got a picture of it from the front. It didn't come up quite as clear, so I just didn't bother adding it to the assignment. All I need is a at least one picture. You'll notice when you add pictures to an assignment, it'll put a little thumbnail in over here so at a glance you can see what the collateral looks like. Like that's the little red Mitsubishi or Mazda Protege that we're looking for right now parked behind the blue car. We had taken that snapshot of them off of Google Street View and copied and pasted that into the assignment. Also like on that motorcycle Go over here to closed assignment so you can see. I attached a picture of the motorcycle to the assignment. And it puts a little thumbnail picture of the vehicle right there. So it's one of the features I like of having Evernotes for my repo software is anytime I attach any kind of documents or attachments, doesn't matter what it is, it could be a PDF file, a Word document, Excel spreadsheet. Uh, a picture, uh, anything, you know, link, put it on Evernotes and it links it up in the assignment and no matter what device I'm on, it can be a, you know, one of my mobile phones, a tablet or a full-blown computer and uh, you're able to see those attachments and documents as little thumbnails in the snippet view. But, anyhow, we shall get rolling. Mm, be careful, okay? I will. Love you, babe.
got the roads all to myself. Ain't nothing but cops and other repo men out this time of the night. Makes traveling around a lot nicer. Get to places a lot quicker. It's the witching hour. Open up Evernotes. This computer do a synchronize. Now we'll bring in all of our information that's out on the cloud on the server down to this computer. Got all the latest information on here. Boom, just like that. There's the new assignment with the Mustang. There's the one with the 05 Subaru Legacy. Oh, it's not an Outback, it's a Legacy. That's right. Subaru Legacy. I'm missing an A. Subaru. Dark out our screen here. usual vehicles in the driveway that are always there pull down the street just a little bit here we have our tracking device Subaru.
here. Easy as pie. Got the tracking device on the vehicle. Now what we'll do is we'll get into the truck and get on the laptop and we'll go into the software that tracks the device and we'll put what's called a geofence around it. And when the vehicle leaves that area, I'll receive an SMS text message on my phone notifying me that the vehicle is on the move and then we'll be able to track it in real time in the morning and get ourselves a Subaru picked up. We know that she, uh, where she works out at and uh, what school their kids go to and a couple of other variables. So there's a number of places that we can end up finding this vehicle at tomorrow, but we shall see how technology work to our advantage in the morning. Because there's just no way you can ever get to a vehicle and do a <clears throat> repossession when it's locked in the garage like that all the time. But you can gain access to it, put a tracking device on it, and uh, do the waiting game, you know, be patient, let the fish come out, go swimming, let us be notified where it's at, so now we're going to head towards this Mustang, it's up in Salt Lake, so it's a 35 minute trip from where I'm at right now, so we'll pause filming and start back up when we're getting ready to back up to the Mustang. So you can see there, I created my geofence. There's now a circle drawn around the location of the device. I've got it set to a radius of 0.25, so basically a quarter mile. And I set the settings on the geofence. You can set it to a number of different settings. You can say if it enters this circle, or if it exits this circle, or if it stays inside the circle for a certain period of time, or if it stays outside of this circle for a certain period of time. There's a number of different ways you can set the geofence to work. A typical way I'll set it is I'll say that as soon as, basically as soon as the device breaks the circle, meaning it exits it, that is an indication that the vehicle is traveling away from the house. And that's what I want for repossession. And so, but a lot of times if I'm like watching a given address, what I can do is if I've got a tracking device on the vehicle, and I want, and I know they they might be heading somewhere. I can go draw a circle around, say, a school I know they go to, or a specific store that they shop at quite often, and I can draw a circle around that location. And I can say, when the device enters this location, notify me. And so you can go set up a multiple geo fences around town at different hot spots, and I name each one accordingly, and then it would notify me on my phone, and it would tell me that they've entered such and such hot spot so different ways you could use the geofencing i typically just do it like this where i draw a circle around the device and i say when it exits this circle go ahead and notify me and that's the fastest way to let me know if the device is uh moving and going away from the house and we're ready to go repo it it's pretty cool stuff gotta love technology Another repo truck out on the crawl. Let's see who it is. <laughs> it's like a rock. He'll know it's me as soon as he gets behind me.
our screen here. Eyes can adjust. Pull over here real quick. Give my camera a quick cleaning. All right. Let's get ourselves a Cobra Mustang. idle up nice and quiet. We don't want to come flying up on this address revving our engine. Nice and slow, nice and quiet. Well that sucks. Mustang was not out front where we expected it to be. Parked right next to that truck the other night. It's not there tonight. That's one of the risks you run going on a repo on a weekend. He might be staying at a girlfriend's house or something like that. He could also be uh, have taken the time to park it in the garage. My guess is that he's just not here tonight. And uh, there's also the possibility that a finance officer called him and pretty much warned him that if he didn't make a payment by such and such time, he'd be up for repo. We get uh, loan officers to do that from time to time. It really messes us up out in the field. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull over here, go do a little bit of recon, see if we know, can tell if the vehicle's here at all or not, or if he's just gone for the evening. I'll just go back up here tomorrow during the day and see if we can catch him during the day. I told him they should have had us pop it the other night when we had the chance and it was here. It's not in the backyard. There is a light on in front of the house. My guess is since it's Friday night, Saturday morning. He's probably still out partying. Probably ended up crashing at a friend's house. Got you drunk somewhere. That's where timing comes into play. On accounts like this, I took the gamble that it was going to be sitting here again. It's not, but it's also good that it's not behind the fence. It shows that he's not hiding it. Because he, there's plenty of room behind that fence to pull the vehicle back there. I mean, it's just bad timing on my part. So, it's a weekend. He'll be home Sunday for sure. We'll get this one on video then. It's all part of repoing. Just pulled up to an address. Skip address for a car we've been looking for for quite some time. It's up in the driveway. There's a black Nissan Pathfinder blocking our access to it. So we get this Pathfinder out of the way. A lot on the street here.
automatic. shift override by getting down into the center console, disconnecting the shifter. Shift lever back in. Factory, how it's supposed to be. Drop this, turn around, pick it up from the front, transport it to the finance company. That was an old skip there. We probably ran 12 different addresses on that one. They just kept sending us over new address after new address after new address. And each time we sent them back a report. Not there, not there, not there. Guess what? This time I get to send back a report that says it was there. Oh, due diligence is the way you work this job. Never give up on it. Never give up on it. It's a good skip right there. I can't believe this one's open again. Actually, I can. It just sucks because we know that every time we've gone out on this one, the vehicle is just sitting there in the garage. You can see it right through the front windows of the house, just sitting there. I banged on the door and banged on the door and banged on the door. Finally, after a month or so, caught someone there at home, got them to answer the door. Said, oh, we'll go in, we'll take care of it, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, right. Their version of taking care of it was to stop taking the bank's calls altogether. So they've asked us to come back out here and investigate what the situation is. Dark blue Hyundai Santa Fe. Same Jeep is out front. Yep, still just sitting in there. Covered in dust. I can read the bin from here.
We're not going to drive it, but we're not going to pay for it either. No garage door opener in this vehicle. I think we've already checked the Jeep a number of times for a garage door opener. Of course, the vehicle is all-wheel drive. Yeah, no garage door opener. They probably just use a code to open it, a little button inside. Got their own cleaning company. There's all kinds of cleaning supplies inside the vehicles. Same old situation, no change. Put any of our window blinds up, down, left, right. And I have to contact the finance company and tell them that pretty much their only option on this account since they can't get the people to take their phone calls. They're ignoring us, knocking at the door, and the vehicle just remains in the garage covered in dust. File for a rig of execution. Have us come out here and pop it open with the blessing of the sheriff's department. We're out here now on a repossession for a Saab 93 that has a license plate that says. Saab 93 from Arizona. We actually know of this location by luck. We uh, had that, there it is right there. We had the vehicle out for repo once before and we got it at the given address. And then they got the vehicle back. And then one day we were in here looking for another repo and I saw that car sitting right there because of the custom license plate. Saab 9-3 from Arizona. I remembered it, made note of it in my head, and said if that ever comes up for a repo again. Well, it did, and we are here, and there it is parked. So this is not only a repo, but also a skip locate. It's a brand new address that the finance company did not have on this debtor. Issues we're going to run into are the fact that it is a front wheel drive, so we will be using the Gojax to quietly pull it out of here. First we're going to get it hooked. One of my main concerns right here is this pole. <sighs> These sobs don't have an easy shift override.
where the key goes right there. Got it locked. So, 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 so.
So again, I didn't get my black convertible Cobra Mustang, which is what I originally left the house for this morning. But since then, I have picked up two skips that were both only probable addresses. And they both turned out to be repos. I think I'm about done with snaps. I've got to come up with a better way to... Actually, I think I might just put a factory tailgate back on and put my glass window back in. I never take the shell off. I never use the fifth wheel. So... never know. Each morning you go out, each day you go out and you think you're going to get this, this or that, and you end up getting a totally different library of vehicles. This job is never boring, that is for sure. Make sure you get the building number off of that building. I also need to go get the parking stall number. That this was parked in. So that we can give them a complete and accurate address. It was parked in number 63. Good day's work so far. It's not even 7 a.m. Got two cars on hook. Got a GPS device on the third one. And almost certainly we'll be picking up that black Mustang either later this afternoon or sometime tomorrow. The Sunday's a really good day for someone of this guy's age. Uh, ethnicity, gender, background, it all ties in, tells us enough about him to know when to pop him. That's why I knew there was a risk of going it in the late wee hours on a Friday night slash Saturday morning, but I did time it to where it was well after the bars were closed, but <clears throat> he ended up over drinking, most likely, and crashing somewhere, which is a smart thing to do. And I still turned it into a profitable morning, so no big deal, right? It's all repoing. It's all repoing. Alright, I just got notified on my phone that our uh, GPS device that's attached to that uh, Subaru Legacy has uh, broken the quarter mile uh, marker. So I went in and I pinged it. And it looks like it's sitting up on State Street at about 2000 North. In Lind right on the, it's right on the Linden Orem border. There's a couple shops right there. There's a Utah College of Massage Therapy. And there's a couple of other places that you can shop in that little shopping center right there. We're just down here in Springville about 10, maybe 15 minutes away from that address. 10 if I haul butt here, get on the freeway and make some good time. And then uh, as soon as I get off the freeway, it's probably another five minutes from the freeway to that location. So this might be our lucky break. See if we can get up there in time and get to it before it moves. It goes back and gets in the garage again. Let's see how this goes. All right, I pinged it one more time. 
just as we're coming up on the uh, parking lot here and it's still parked in the parking lot and I zoomed in and it's definitely parked where you would expect it to be parked if it was someone that was parked at the Utah College of Massage Therapy and get a lot of uh, females that uh, go to that school to learn how to become massage therapists and stuff and they have early morning classes. We've actually repossessed a couple people <laughs> from this parking lot in the past. So, not sure if she's at the school or just shopping. There are a number of vehicles in the parking lot right now. According to my map, she's on one of the crossroads this way. So she got the sun just barely popped over the west. There it is right there. The sun just barely popped over the west mountain. So it is bright. There's a car behind it. So we're going to want to hug it from the front. on the back. So I guess those that she's in here getting a massage or just going to school. Tracking device off the frame. Sometimes these legacies will roll slowly from the front wheels if you pick them up like front wheel drive. If they're in two wheel drive mode, it allows me to be able to pull further out here in the parking lot the dollies on it. That way if she comes running out we don't have to worry about a confrontation with her. Or at least we can do what we can to avoid it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slow roll over here behind this building right here. That's actually my old impound yard right there. It's got that high fence that we put in. It cost me $4,400 to have that fence with those privacy slats put in because the city required it, because whenever we kept RVs and larger pieces of collateral back there, they didn't want it to be visible from State Street. So kind of a city code ordinance BS thing. Yeah, that's my, that's my, one of my old yards. So now we're hidden here behind this building. And she comes out, she's gonna think her car's completely gone. And it gives us the time to work for all the dollies. Oh man, that just went. Picture perfect. Could have asked for better results with the GPS. Paid for itself. Beautifully done. See, it is an Outback. Mine says, paperwork says Legacy. Why it says Outback. Twenty nine seventeen. Yeah, this is legacy. Gold green what color is that? It's definitely not green. Not even gold. I call that beige. It's not a legacy, it's an outback. 
Oh so yeah, VIN matches, plate matches. It's all good. Get the dollies thrown and get it transported. As soon as we got rolling, the old factory alarm starts going off. So now we're rolling down State Street. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I'm like, here we are! Repo! <laughs> oh, 7.30 in the morning. Third one's on hook. Gotta love Saturdays. Go get us a black Cobra Mustang. Call it a perfect day. So far, it's been a hat trick. Gonna unlock this thing and disconnect the battery before I. Uh, pull up to my house because I ain't pissing my neighbors off at 7.30 in the morning. No way. <laughs> Shut this thing up. say Outback unloaded. We'll get us some breakfast. 